Uh, it's Holly's Hot Spurs back with another one. Chatting all things Tottenham, we're second to none. Special guests every time, if it's win, lose, or draw. The passion is high, like Harry Kane when he scores. Or when Lloris makes a world class save. We got Hoybier running the mid every game. Settle down, stick around, say your thoughts with the panel. And make sure you're subscribing to the channel. Coys. Hello, yes, and uh, welcome to another Holly's Hot Spurs Live. It is called, obviously, a transfer news special, but this will be the last one, obviously, before the season kicks off, which is very exciting. But before we get into Tottenham stuff, I just want to say football has come home. I'm a bit worse for wear today, but it doesn't matter because I've seen it come home, so it's lovely stuff. But with me tonight to obviously talk about uh, Tottenham, I am joined by two lovely guests. So first of all, Patrick, how are you, my friend? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, man. I'm I'm excited. We've got, what, four days till the season kicks off, so it won't be long till we're back at the lane, hopefully partying, celebrating, having a few drinks afterwards. So, yeah, man, I'm all good. I'm all good. Good, good. Yeah, it should be a, a good day, obviously, on Saturday. And, George, I love it. You've come in, rep the England shirt. How are you, my friend? Oh, I've got to. I've got to. Absolutely <laughs> historical day yesterday, so it was brilliant to watch. Um, yeah, I'm good. Thanks for having me, having me back on. Looking forward to the season, especially... The Champions League because hey. the woman is traveling for those. And, oh, <laughs> blessed to be back in that competition, man. <laughs> no, it's good. And like I say, them lot down the road have to play on Thursday, so it's even better. Um, but no, <laughs> it, it should be a fun, exciting time. I think we've all kind of missed Tottenham. Um, so it'd be nice to obviously cheer them on at the lane on Saturday. But before we obviously preview that game coming up, we have to talk about our last pre-season game. Now, I thought I'd start with some positives. Yes, I have clutched at some straws. But we'll go for it anyway. And I think the one uh, positive that I really liked is obviously seeing Perisic, Patrick, start for his first game. So what did you make of his performance? Yeah, it was good. Um, it's just basically what we expect. Uh, energy, running up and down the flanks, getting some good balls in. Obviously, he's still going to take time to gel. It's not like you don't just wave a magic wand and all of a sudden there's that cohesion understanding there. But he's a quality player and he'll add a lot of quality down that left-hand side because... um. You know, don't get me wrong. I like Sasson Young. I think he's a good player, but there's still gaps in his in his in his play style. And you know, I think Sasson Young can learn a lot from from Perisic. So I'm looking forward to see. To be fair, I'm looking. I'm more looking forward to Perisic writing a, uh, a lot of wrongs. And basically, so many people have written him off because oh, he's 33, he's finished, he's got no legs. They're just saying crap because he's allegedly old without even understanding how good of a player he is and what he brings to the team so I'm looking forward to him actually shutting out a lot of doubters up more than anything but yeah um uh, the game I mean I'm sure we'll touch on it uh, but yeah Perisic I'm excited about I really am yeah definitely I mean it's, it's it's been a long time coming that we can actually see him in a Spurs shirt obviously starting for that game as well George but what I noticed about him he was finding areas of the game high up the pitch obviously you expect that from someone that's going to put some crosses in but they were half decent a bit like Patrick said he could probably teach Sessignon a few tricks or two yeah definitely I think he was also pretty much nearly denied an assist as well there's a couple of crosses that went in the box where I think oh who was it was it Kane no, so yeah, someone Kane. headed over the bar, I think. Or I was, think it was or, Kane. I think it was Kane. It was a Kane, yeah. So I yeah. think he's already in like his first proper full uh, full game for us, putting some chances on the plate. And I think naturally, obviously, him being a winger before has helped him big time because in the final third, I think there's just been a few times we've obviously had like over-reliance on the likes of Kane's son um, and even now Kulazeski to a degree. Um, we've been begging for some nice crosses for these three <laughs> in the box. And I think we've got a really, really good player to do that now. Yeah, definitely. Like I say, I think it's kind of like the missing piece. Like we've got these big aerial threats in the likes of Kane, for instance, and we haven't got anyone that can really cross a ball. Um, so Perisic, I think, is definitely one to watch. And I think I'm really excited about it, to be fair. Um, obviously, another player I want to talk about who was also putting crosses into the box, which found himself in ridiculous places, was obviously Lenglet, uh, Patrick. It was the same kind of story uh, with Lenglet as well. Yeah, and he's one that, to be fair, as you remember on here, I wasn't that excited about him coming in. Um, I hope he proves me wrong because there's a lot of it's a bit underwhelming. I mean, I'm sure he's a decent player, but we were looking at your Bastonis, your Scrinias, your you know, your top uh oh, who's the other guy from our uh, Bremer as well. Mm -hmm. So Indica. So all these guys that are like considered top, maybe not world class, but top, top class left sided centre backs. And then we end up with Lengley on loan, who maybe two or three years ago we would have been super excited him coming from Seville. 
But at the moment, he's kind of been underwhelming his last year and a half. So, you know, I know Conte and Paratici know what they're doing and they, they basically unearthed, you know, uh, well, no, really, they, they revitalised uh, Kulicheski and Ben Tanker. So I'm hoping they can do the same with Lengley. But to be fair to him, his passing ability and him on the ball, it is really good. So if we can see that side of him, then happy days. But I'm still a bit, yeah, I still want a bit more, to be fair. I want a world-class centre-back or left-sided centre-back. And then hopefully Lengley has depth. But with Ben Davies just signing a new contract, we kind of can see we might not get another guy in there now. Mm. And it is interesting that you've mentioned Ben Davies because at the moment, George, obviously Twitter's the place to be if you want to see uh, some views of people at the moment. And they're saying mm-hmm. that they would prefer Longley, obviously, to start over Davies. How do you kind of feel about that? Is that after one kind of game with him in, are you feeling that vibe or you think you should still stick with Davies? I think if Davis is like fully fit and back to normal, then yeah, I think Davis probably should start because he deserves it from the way he's been playing the last year. Um, I think, like you said, though, he's, Langley's had a couple of good moments in, in in these last couple of games where there seems to be a bit of a player there. I think there's there's been question marks over his more defensive side. I think a lot of people have said before that, yeah, his passing out is great and his um, long balls through have been really good for the last couple of games. So I think we've got a good player there. But um, and I probably would start him if Davis just isn't quite fully fit yet. Mm-hmm. No, that's a good shout, and I I, th- I think it's really difficult as well. Like we've we've spoken, we touched on it. Obviously, we want another strong defender to come in. But mm. for me, I think long life is is good business if we're going to look at it from a business kind of sense of head. I don't like to do that with football, but it's a loan. We're kind of trying before we buy. It's just Patrick. I don't know if we're going to get that big centre back signing over the line. I know, and. You know, I don't want to be, I don't want to sound ungrateful because we have done, like you said, we've done great business and we've really added to the depth of the squad, even from this, uh, from the aspect of a backup goalkeeper who we're not really going to talk about that much. But uh, Forster is way better than, um, than uh, uh, what's his name now? Sorry, my mind's gone a bit blank. Galini? But yeah, Galini. <laughs> <Then Slappy Galini. laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> who, who never really featured, but when he did, he didn't look that great. And Fraser Forster, really good keeper. I mean, you saw the game he had against uh, Arsenal. Uh, uh, at home when he literally made like 10 saves, literally point blank saved uh, a shot from Saka, which he sort of scored from and those other stuff. So uh, if you look at it, we've really bolstered the squad. I still feel there's a few gaps there. I would really like, like you said, a quality centre-back and I really think we need a creative midfielder. We need a real silky uh, attacking playmaker in your like Madison, Paqueta type of ilk. Uh, If we get those two type of players in, fantastic and I really think we can have a good crack at the whip at all competitions right now I think the squad is much stronger but there's still a few holes and I mean even Roma a stubborn team like a Jose Mourinho's team that are going to sit behind the ball be hard to break down we still struggled to break them down which is why we want a number 10 in a creative player so still a few holes uh there's been talk that we are going to go for a number 10 so hopefully we do go for it it's a bit frustrating when you see Newcastle now putting two good bids mm. for Madison who is somebody that we're all screaming out for, English, young, homegrown, knows the Prem and his quality through and through. It's a no-brainer for me, get it done. So I don't know what they're doing. Hopefully we're cooking up something behind the scenes, but a bit frustrating. You know, like, I don't want to sound ungrateful. I don't want to seem like a spoiled brat, so to speak, but I know how close we are and we've done so much good work. I wouldn't want it to like basically just like miss out, you know what I mean, by, by just yeah. a, a whisker when we've still got, a bit of the window left, but only a week of the yeah. season, you know, uh, uh, status play uh, before yeah. we start playing. I think the good news is we have got a month left of the mm. window. And we've seen in previous times, like in previous windows that we've had, all of our, like a lot of our business we'd leave to the end. Whereas at least we've gotten, like, like you said, a lot of the squad depth done and they're all integrated. I think the harsh reality is when it comes to these bigger signings, like a, a big, big centre back or, or an attacking midfielder, so to speak, like, I think they are going to take a lot, a lot longer. There's, there's no yeah. pressure for the clubs to sell the players or anything like that. Um, so, and and even with just like players like Bastoni, for example, obviously he's come out and his agent said we're going, to, we want to stay, we want to stay, and Inter have tried to shift on Skriniar instead. But the, the reality is they still need to sell to make up the money for this window. So, even though I don't think it's going to happen, I think just situations like that, I think we they can potentially go down to deadline day where. Yeah. Clubs are maybe put in positions where, OK, they have to sell. They haven't been able to pass on Skriniar. They're not going to sell Martinez. So who's the next big thing they could potentially sell? And, and we're a buyer. So not saying he's the only one, but there's situations like that that, we, that could come out in the next month or so. 
No, and I think, like you said, we've been in position before where it's literally like, what, a couple of hours before deadline day, we we just chuck at money at, at silly things and then it comes out with, one, oh, actually, I don't think we should have done that. Whereas, like you say, we're in prime position in this transfer window because we've done the business that we need to do to fill the holes. There's just a couple more that we need to kind of block up, if that makes sense. So, yeah, yeah and I, I'm glad that you've mentioned Madison, Patrick, because obviously, like you've mentioned, that Newcastle are coming with two bids. And, and lots of people are saying that they are the, the the thing that we're missing, the key, so to speak, because like you said, against Jose and him, like obviously playing the way he does, putting loads of men behind the ball, it just felt like at times we couldn't break them down and there will be teams like that in the Premier League. So it, it is a bit worrying that Newcastle are going after this. So why aren't we? Yeah, and, and like you said, I mean, both you, George, and Holes have said it. We've re- li- pretty much done the bulk of our business, which is fantastic. So we are in a prime position now where we're almost like vultures. We're just going to see what happens, see the domino effect, see who moves where, and then we can just literally swoop in and attack. And a few guys in the comments are saying exactly what I'm thinking as well. See what see what Newcastle put in for Madison, see if Leicester are willing to accept, and then boom, we swoop in. We've got the money there. We've got the clout. We've got... We're in a perfect position in terms of the players that Madison would love to play with. Conte, a manager, I'm sure he would love to be under uh, his helm. And then also the fact we're in Champions League. So we've got a lot of things in our favour. Um, we've done pretty much all the business that we want to do. So, yeah, now it's time to just literally, it's a buyer's market. We've got the money and clout behind us. We go out and we really add some gems to this team and really go for it. Show that intent. Because a lot of... T- you know, at the beginning of the window, a lot of people were saying that we had the best transfer window and we're really going to do bits. It's kind of died off a bit, which is fair enough because, you know, it's not as like, as new now. Other teams have done business, but the reality is we've still done really good business and we just need a bit more to add that cherry on top. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, lots of people are saying that we, we don't necessarily need a creative midfielder because obviously Conte doesn't really play that kind of system. But George, my argument to them would be, but... I think Conte is the one that wants to mix it up with Howard again because I don't think necessarily we have the quality in wing backs that Conte, not that he doesn't want, but I don't think we're there quite yet. So maybe adding in, say, a Madison would maybe mix the ball game up a little bit. Oh, 100%. And I think like it allows us to switch to the 3-5-2 as much as it probably won't happen that often, but he can obviously be in that middle three and would be a perfect player um, considering I think, well, myself especially, I wanted Ericsson to sort of be that player didn't happen. We didn't put an offer in. Conte obviously didn't want him. Um, I think Madison, I mean, yeah, Pedro's already said it perfectly, but homegrown, young, knows the Prem. And I think as well, he's sort of a player you can get away with signing later on in the window because at least we know he's played in the Prem all these years so far already. So it's not like he needs to come up to speed. That would be my only worry about signing like a, a Paqueta or anyone like that is that you'd still need to then give them a bit of time mm. to adapt afterwards. Yeah. Um, I think another good thing about Madison as well is someone, I think I saw someone post on Twitter showing that he actually even played right wing for Leicester a few times last season. Yeah, he does. Got, yeah. Two, yeah, yeah. got two goals and two assists, two assists from that position. So it's not like we have to move away from the 3-4-3. Three, three. That allows us to to rest um, Kulusevski or Son or whoever it may be um, and would have a, a serious, serious attacking threat if we had someone like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think the the main, main question is because, because Son, Kane and Kulusevski have been so good for us right now, if you're then saying that Madison has to fill in that centre mid role, is he going to be able to play deeper in that two alongside someone like Basuma or Hoybe or Bentico or whoever it may be? I think that's probably the only question mark. But look, if we want to aim big at the Champions League, Premier League, whatever it may be, we we need this sort of squad. Yeah, excuse me. Definitely, I think you're. I think you're both right there in the sense that obviously. We, I think we've got the depth sorted now. If you look at, I know people have made it on Twitter where they put all the different formations and all the different people that uh, can play where here and there. The depth is there. But like you said, and like you said, Patrick, in, in that kind of word of a gem, there's, there's a gem that uh, one or two gems may be missing. And Madison could maybe be that gem. But obviously, going back to the Roma game, <laughs> the goal did come from Roma and it was so infuriating. I'll come to you for this, this one first, George, because it came from a corner. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously, we have brought in a sack the uh, set piece man now. Oh, no, get him out. He's not doing his job. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just infuriating to see something like that happen. I mean, what are your kind of thoughts when it obviously went in? Yeah, I mean, looking at like the replays and stuff, it just looked like no one was seriously marking him. It was way too easy for him to just run onto the ball, not really contested. I don't know if you could put that down to maybe the, the players were just being a bit more lackadaisical and not concentrating as much or whatever it may be. But when it comes to the crunch time of the Premier League or Champions League, we, we can't, we simply just cannot have those moments because like, you, as you guys all know, like how many times have we conceded from corners before? Mm. Like it's, 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 it's definitely a weakness. 
Um, so hopefully that gets improved. Again, that was when what Sanchez was on the pitch. So I don't know if Lengler would be would be better in that sort of scenario when defending. I, I don't know myself, but yeah, and I think that's as well where another big centre back maybe coming in would potentially help out with that because as amazing as Romero is, he's not exactly known for his his heading ability and clearance. I think Kane is probably still our best <laughs> clear of the ball from corners anyway. So yeah, it was just a bit frustrating and then typical typical Jose fashion. It's they're just going to see out the rest of the game from then. So yeah, yeah very good. I see. I don't know. Like, obviously, we're talking about another set piece goal, but Patrick, is there really much you can take from it other than, like George kind of said, it's, we're just a bit switched off at that moment? Yeah, in time? I wouldn't read too much into it. It's pre season. You know, I mean, it's always annoying to get beat. It's really annoying when you concede a goal, which is quite flimsy and soft, but it's pre season. It's just more for the fitness, the run outs, trial of formations. We've had Lucas at right wing back. So we're trialing different things just to see because obviously on Saturday it's crunch time. We ain't really got time to mess about and 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 trial things out so um i don't know if you're gonna i don't know if you're gonna touch on it holes i think another highlight was romero's tackle mm -hmm. like this guy he's he's mm. immense man in terms yes. of his timing and his reading of the game he's fantastic i hope a lot of people well, i think a lot of people do now understand how good he is when i say a lot of people as in not spurs fans but i really feel this season is going to be his breakout season and he's going to show the world especially in the champions league how much of a good player 100%. he is man the way he reads the game is fantastic. Um, he's so quick. He's just so... And he, the thing is, he just doesn't give a fuck. Like, he will slide in, no fucks given, but he always gets the ball. Yeah, sometimes he might take the man out, but it's more often than not, it's clean. And yeah, he just he always... He's a presence and he's a beast and he always lets his man know that he's on him. So I, I love the guy, man. I really do. And um, I think he's pretty much been, yeah, one of the standout players in preseason already. Mm, no, definitely. I mean, I think I'm glad that you've brought up Romero because I think we're all crying out that we want another centre back in. But having Romero at that bat is just something else, isn't he, George? It's just mm -hmm. different gravy. He's so enjoyable to watch. I keep having that flashback to that Brighton game where he just came steamrolling across Lamptey and <laughs> just took the ball away from him. <laughs> the amount of times this guy does that. And then, yeah, even like the Everton game against Richarlison. It's, yeah. it's just hilarious to see, man. But we've missed that. We, we've been. We've never been the bully type team, and I feel like that's what Conte is really building now. Like, especially when you look at the signings of Richarlison, Basuma, and Co. Like, th these guys are no pushovers, and Romero is certainly not, man. And I agree with Patrick. I think he's going to have. I think in a couple of years he will have to be in that conversation of like best in the Premier League, best yeah. in Europe. He's already getting towards that point, but like you said, a lot of rival fans because he didn't have the the consistency of games because of his injury at the start in this in the season just went. I think people weren't really. Keeping an eye, keeping an eye on him too much from rival perspective, but yeah, this season, man, he's gonna he's gonna prove prove the world what a quality player he is. Definitely, hundred percent. And like you said, I I just love watching him play, and it, it is true from both what you're saying. Conte's bringing in players that will just go through people, and will go through people, but they know what they're doing, not as yeah. like, like clattering their yeah. legs out. They not know what they're doing. Anything and just... Mm, which, which at the back, obviously, I know you, you mentioned Sanchez and stuff, but there is a, a lot of rashness in that back line. So having Romero that's the calm, composed one is definitely, obviously, nice to see. Um, mm -hmm. I've got a a uh, Everton fan in the chat. Now, I thought Richardson had an OK game. He still hasn't managed to find the back of the net, though, Patrick, which is a bit, like you said, it, it's only pre-season, but you'd expect him maybe to bang one in. What was your kind of thoughts on Richardson so far? Uh, I think... It's a tricky one, and I've said this to a lot of my Spurs friends. I'm like, forget the price tag. Just look at the fact that we've got a player in where we've never had this depth before. We've never had a quality player that can play across the front three, deputise for Son, Kane, even Kuliczewski. And we also know on his day he can start and we're not going to be too worried. Like the depth, the, the drop or the golfing class between our standard starters and our bench players has been awful. Now we've got Richarlison in. This guy's a top player. Yeah, we may have overpaid. I get that. But the big teams, you just pay what it is and get the player in, man. No messing about. Uh, the way we're screaming out for Madison as well, it might be 50 or 60. If we're serious, you just put the money up and get him in. And I like the fact that we did that with Richarlison. So I'm not too bothered about the price tag. Yeah, I would have liked him to see, uh, score a couple by now, but it's only pre-season, man. You can see he's been active in all the games. He's been involved. So the goals will come. So, um, yeah, he just needs to relax, not overthink it, because sometimes a new signing can always try and do too much. Um, he's a good player, link up with the team. He's been involved so far. So, to be fair, from what I've seen, so far, so good. 
Definitely. And I think the thing is as well, George, that he's actually, you can see a bromance forming with some of the players as well. And I think that is a big part of it. If he's already feeling like he's part of the squad or the players are obviously loving him already, it just shows that the goal will hopefully come. And like Patrick said, just adds another dimension to that front three. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's definitely with the Brazilian boys, he seems to have great chemistry as, as probably expected. But even like I've seen loads of clips of him and Son getting yeah, on really well, which yeah. is exactly what you want because they're hopefully going to be linking up on the pitch as well. Um, so yeah, I think he's going to be a, he's going to be a good fun character to have, and I think aside from obviously the, the goal scoring drought so far, I think there's been a lot of other things I was impressed by. In I think it was the severe game, if or in a couple of the games to be fair, I think his his touch has been fantastic. There's been a lot of times where a ball was headed long up towards him, and he's been able to hold up the ball really really well and drawn in quite a good few fouls, um, especially when was it the one I think Lengley put a long ball forward, and I think he was the one that chased it down and won the foul sort of like left side of the box. Um, so he, he's got other good things about him, especially, as you said, like a squad player. Um, I'm just excited to see see what he can do. I think we, we shouldn't have this expectation that he's going to get 15 goals or anything like that because at the end of the day, he's not... Well, he might do eventually, but at the moment, he's not going to be a regular starter. So, yeah, we'll just see where it goes. It's, it's like you said, it's a good good squad player, good a good player to have coming off the bench as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, sticking with this kind of uh, thought of transfers and stuff, um, NS Sports TV is coming with a super chat. Thank you very much. And he has said, question for the panel, how do you rate this transfer window? Now, we know it's not finished yet, but say the door slams shut tonight, Patrick, how would you kind of be feeling? I'd be quite, I don't know, man. It's hard to judge right now. In this current moment, I'm feeling a bit emotional. So I'd probably say a six out of 10 because I know... Yeah, it sounds a bit wild, I know, but I know how good the window's been, but I know there's still a few holes. And because we've got like four weeks, I know we can address them. Like, we're in a real good position now. Probably, yeah, we need to see like your likes of um, uh, the Celso's, your Endon Belles. Roden's just gone now. So we need to trim the fat, your Harry Winkses. So we're probably waiting to get a few of these out before we bring. <laughs> sorry. I oh, know when I said you Winks, your face. Yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> but in terms of getting these guys out, then we possibly can bring in because I didn't really think about that before. But we, we are a bit bloated at the moment with guys that are definitely not in Conte's plan. So get a few of these guys out. Then hopefully we can add a few more. So it's a six at the moment, but it could easily go to an eight, eight and a half, nine if we just do a bit more. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's just a little tiny weeny bit more that we need to do. I mean, George, are you kind of on the same vibe as well? Or are you happy? Like, I think we're con we're content, but we know that we could do more and that we want to do more if we want to obviously challenge for silverware, I think. Yeah, 100%. I'd, I'd say I'd put it at about like a seven, seven and a half at the moment yeah. because I do love what we've done so far. Like, I've been screaming for Basuma the last couple of years, man. This guy is unbelievable. And the fact that we just randomly just got it over the line so quick. And even the likes of, like Perisic, I think, is such a such a smart buyer for what we want to do right now. Um, like the squad's been improved, but you're right. We, it's, if we seriously want to be able to compete with the top teams, which is what Conte want wants to do, he came to this club with the thought that he could build something to win the Premier League or whatever it may be, because otherwise he just wouldn't take the job. That's not what he's about. So if we do want to get to that level and try and catch the likes of Man City and Liverpool, we are just a couple of those really solid signings, like another Romero-esque signing where this guy's walked into the team, looks different gravy and will, will literally take us to that next level. So, yeah, that would bring it up to like a 9-10 if we can get the, the big centre-back and Madison or whoever it may be in the in midfield. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like exactly what George said. Exactly that. So yeah, I took the words out of my mouth. Exactly. We're so close, but we, you know, we know what we need to do because we're not looking at, not to be disrespectful, we're not looking at your Chelsea's, your Arsenal's, and even your Man United's. We're looking at Liverpool and Man City, and we know that mm -hmm. they've got depth in abundance. Like even Ake can come in and look good. You know, they've got John Stones, who we may not all rate him, but he's a good player. So we just need a few more, and then we really have the depth like these guys have. And that, that's why I think as well we need to just sorry just very quickly like we just we need to not worry about like oh Richarlison's cost fifty million or this that yeah. and because at the end of the day these big teams they don't care about that they need they, they have problems that they need to solve so they go and spend it exactly. Liverpool did that with Van Dijk like and I will I'll put my hands up I laughed at it when they spent seventy five million on Van Dijk because the player that I saw at Southampton I was like is it seventy five really that much. And look what's happened. They've won everything since then because of that. And even like spending loads on Allison, Man City, obviously, as we know, because they've got loads of money, but they the money that they spend on backup options and their bench is insane. And that's why they're able to put up these record numbers of points a year because they just have a, an unbelievable squad. So yeah, I think a couple of players and we, we could we we could mean serious business. 
And I think, like, now what you guys have already said as well, I think it's because of how much time we've got left. You're thinking to yourself, right, let's not let this slip away because we are mm. practically in the driving seat for once yeah. in the transfer window. And I think that's the thing that it's not great in me yet because it's not over yet. But I'm saying if we're going to go for it, we need to go for it now, surely. Um, yeah, I agree. But I want to talk about, obviously, we're talking about centre-backs. Obviously, we have heard the news that, obviously, Brodon has gone out on loan. And, George, I come to you for this. Do you think maybe freeing him up for a loan and potentially a permanent deal at the end of it, could that maybe sway heads for a centre-back to come out? I know we're talking heavily about a centre-back tonight, but could that free up maybe a position and some wages, some money for a centre-back to come in? Yeah, I think or... it definitely could. I think because, as well, I think it was quite obvious before the window started that, um, or a lot of people were claiming that Conte was after two centre backs anyway, um, a left centre back and a central centre back. Because I think on the right, we're, we're I think we're obviously you got Romero, and I think to be honest with you, Sanchez is okay for a backup centre back in that position. That's not going to play all the time. Like as you saw from the end of last season, when Romero couldn't play the last two or three games, he actually did a really good job at covering it. So I, yeah. I think just yeah, preseason obviously has been a bit of a mess. But aside from that, I think central centre back and left centre back are obviously the biggest priorities. Lenglet can cover both, but realistically, he's going to be most comfortable in that left centre back role. And now that, especially as Joe Rodon's gone, that does leave that space for another centre back, especially as as well. I think Tanganga's probably yeah. going AC yeah. or abroad. Yeah. Um. So I would look at if if we're not going to be able to get like a Skriniar, a big player like that, because um, central centre back is is it's a tough tough market at the moment to get a top 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 player. I think the likes of Milenkovic is probably a really smart mm. option. Because I think, especially right now, I do think Dyer is Conte's first choice. So I think Milenkovic is a type of player that can cover for Dyer or rotate and come in and potentially take the first spot. So yeah, there's a good few options. Just we we need a couple more to go out first. I think. Yeah, definitely. I, I think obviously Joe Roden going. I think it'd be good for him because I I don't know what it was. Obviously, Jose, Jose had a little lightness to him, but then it kind of dropped. And obviously, mm. Conte hasn't really decided that he's going to play him so Patrick I think for player and for us like George has said in terms of hopefully getting the centre back in it's a win-win yeah and the thing is like you said Holes I actually like Joe Roden every time he played he looked good he looked composed he was kind of thrown in the deep end in some games he still came out with his head ha held high whenever he's played for Wells he's looked good and that's quite uh that's a credit to him because he hardly plays for Tottenham but he'll play a full 90 minutes for Wells look fit look good still be sharp so I'm really interested. I'm going to definitely try and watch as many Rens games as I can because I really want to see what he's about as he's playing week in and week out. And if it doesn't work for him over, the, uh, sorry, uh, for him at Spurs, then at least he can go, um, you know, with some with some credit in the bank because whenever he has played, even though it's been sporadically, for me, he's done a good job. So I don't know what it is. I don't know why he didn't really get the run that he deserved, but sometimes these things happen. So I'm glad he's gone. I uh, realise he's not really going to play, get some minutes and then we'll see you know, if he does well, hopefully we can hold on to him. If not, it's 20 mil, decent amount, and, and we move on. But there's no point having these players like your Tank Gangers, your Rodens, your Winxes, your Lacelsos that are never going to play. Get get rid of them. And like we did in January, we only bought in Kudacheski and Ben Tanker, but they literally played every game and they made such a difference. So it's just about being smart now. Yeah, definitely. And I think in the past we've held on to players for far too long to try and obviously hope that they're going to do well so their sell-on price is higher. But obviously, I think now with Paratici in, I think Levy's had to bite his tongue and be like, fine, whatever, do whatever. Because I, I don't think they're going to necessarily recruit uh, recruit that money anymore. So I think it is a good bit of business to send Road on the loan. Hopefully, it makes it out there. And then maybe we've got a bit more money if they want to buy him. Mm. If not, he comes back to Tottenham, he does well. So I, I think it's a win-win. But obviously, moving away from pre-season, because that was obviously a 1-0 loss, um, <laughs> we can now turn our heads, obviously, to the Premier League. And we are back at home this Saturday against Saints. And Patrick, I'll come to you first. How excited are you to be back at the lane to watch? Ah, oh, buzzing, man, buzzing. And the fact it's on a Saturday, boys, boys and girls, because Holly obviously your girl, but <laughs> Saturday, three o'clock, prime time, like you can't get better than that. Now we're Champions League. We ain't got to keep playing on Sundays. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Everyone's looking forward to linking up again before and after the game. But more, first and foremost, I mean, to be fair, I don't really know what Southampton have been doing. I haven't really been keeping an eye on them. I've not heard much from them. Obviously, we've got so many new players, so I'm looking forward to seeing what the lineup is for the first game. Will Basuma start? Will it be? Will he be paired with Ben Tanker? I think the front three picks itself. Will Perisic start? Will Spence be on the bench? Will he get a run? You know, there's there's a lot of exciting options. Obviously, with Charleston as well, how how many minutes will he get? 
and and we've been a team which have never really come in with a lot of good quality signings where we can actually look forward to them being you know added and included and seeing what's going on so it's really exciting and obviously Conte's first full season as well with a pre-season so there's a lot of exciting variables there so yeah I'm I'm buzzing I'm buzzing like it will be good, and I think I think I saw something from the the Tottenham Trust saying how obviously I think it's gone up by seventy seven percent on how um, excited fans are obviously oh, with the okay. crowd, okay. with the experience mm. of match days. Whereas obviously prior last season it wasn't so great, so I think yeah. that's also something to really look forward to. But George, I think the big question is like Patrick's kind of touched on is who's going to be starting in that mm. mid three kind of thing because I've looked at some of Saints' sign. Obviously, they've got James Ward-Prowse in the middle, but they've also got a Rebo uh, from Rangers as who they brought in. So having him in the middle, what would you kind of shape up or pair against a Rebo and James Ward-Prowse? What would your combination be in the middle? And that's a bit of a question. <laughs> I think, to be honest with you, just looking at preseason at the moment and sort of what Conte uh, favoured before, I think Hoiberg's going to start regardless. I think... I would love it to get to a position where it is a Basuma Benton core midfield because that to me on paper sounds incredible. <laughs> and I'd want both of them to play because I mean Benton core is silky plays, like just looks so composed. And Basuma, I think what he can do once the ball's won back, carrying it up the pitch, I think he's a quality, quality player. But I think for now he's gonna stick to what's worked so far. And I think it'll be Benton Core and Hoybjerg. Um, with hopefully a Basuma feature, whether that's coming in as a middle three later on the line, uh, later, later in the game to sort of hold up the game if we need to like keep the win, or if that is to replace Benton Core, which is which he's done before with bringing on the likes of Winks. Mm. Like I'm a lot more confident bringing on Basuma than I am bringing on, <laughs> bringing on Winks to see out a game. So yeah, Jesus. I think it'll be yeah Benton Core Hoybjerg is what I think the centre mids will start as. Mm, definitely, I, I think that's a good shout. Obviously. With James Ward Prowse and his free kicks, though, Patrick, um, and we're talking about dead ball situations against Roma. How do you kind of stop him, so we say? Yeah, we just need to be smart because, um, you know, a lot of people got onto Heiberg last year. I think he played a bit too many minutes. Uh, so he's a good player, but obviously the good thing is he won't be overexerted or overused this year. But when we played Southampton and we were 2-1 up, when Hoiberg came off, that's when James ward Fast had literally the rubber, the green, and he was getting onto balls and just creating havoc. Because Hoiberg was literally man-marking him before he went off. And then obviously, literally ward Fast, the same cross, identical goals, uh, and we ended up losing 3-2. So Hoiberg being in would be great because he's he doesn't take no shit and he actually does put a shift in. Sometimes, yeah, his passing may not be the best. His ball retention might not be that good, but you know he's going to give 100% and um, we're going to need that. Someone needs to be on ward Prowse and man-mark him because if you stop him, you essentially stop their attack. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we need to be smart. No silly fouls outside the box. You know they're going to go down quite easily anywhere in that final third. And again, Hopefully Sanchez doesn't start because you know Sanchez loves a nibble. You don't want to be giving him any chance of a you know of a of a dead ball around the danger zone because they are really good at that. Mm, definitely, uh, I think like you say, I mean Hoiberg had the luxury of obviously playing with James Ward in the same team, so he's kind of trained with him, so he knows how he works. But you're yeah. right, you need to stop where the ball's coming from, and it, it's going to be pretty much James Ward Prowse pulling all the strings um, for Southampton. But I've got a question here from Adam, and he says, do we think Perisic starts or Sessegnon? Now, I'll come to you for that one, George. What are you kind of feeling on, on that kind of take? I think Perisic should start. I mean, I want him to start for sure, because after those crosses, a couple of crosses I saw in that preseason game, even though there weren't many chances, they, they looked lethal. They, they looked like, and I think it was the, the game before as well. I know he came on towards the end of the game, and he had like one chance, and it straight away was in the centre of the box. Mm -hmm. So, He's a man I definitely would want to start the game. And I think, for me personally, I've always been a person that I would rather start with our strongest possible team. And if Perisic does need to be rested for a bit for fitness-wise, then I'd rather we start with him and then take him off. Because I think it's a lot harder for players to come in, like, in the middle of a game, then warm up and then be ready to carry on. Do you know what I mean? Especially if there's only mm. half an hour left. So I'd rather he start the game, ease into the game, as the rest of the players will do, and then bring him off later if we have to. We've got the five subs, so we can do it. So, yeah, I, I think Perisic should start, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what would you think as well, Patrick? Are you kind of on the same vibe? Would you rather start yeah, Perisic? Yeah, exactly what George said. Start Perisic, start with that quality, that experience. Those dead balls have been delicious when we've seen them. And then, um, you know, Cessin Young's a good player. I like Cessin Young. So there's no, it's no disservice to Cess if he comes in. Sess will put a shift in both ways going forward and defensively. But I think Sess just needs to be better in that final third. So for me, Perisic gets the nod. And people forget Perisic is super fit. Um, 
You know, I know he's coming off an injury, so yeah, he may not be up to full speed, but the guy is a is, is a machine. So if he's good to go, start him, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think that's a good shout. Like you say, we've got five subs this season. It's just annoying and a bit sad that obviously Skippy has apparently mm-hmm. hurt himself yeah. in a training. I, I think it was word that he's like had stitches in his foot, and I think we are Tottenham TV were reporting something. Yeah, they said it's a fracture. broken foot. Yeah, yeah, so I'm not yeah. sure what the. I think it was in said. training, like stud straight onto it. I think. Oh shit! Yeah. Okay, yeah. is that what happened? Yeah, I Dude. think so. Apparently, he's unlucky, man. Unlucky kid. Every time. I'm, it's crazy. Just when you think it's gonna like kick off for him, it, it yeah. then kind of goes to pop. So, like I say, he I don't think he'll be around for Saturday, which would have been no. a nice little headache for for Conte as well to try and sort out who he's gonna put in the middle. But I think you guys are kind of right with the the sense of Perisic starting, and obviously that two in the middle. Um, I don't normally like to do score predictions but because it's against Southampton. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so, George, I come to you first. What's your kind of score predictions against Southampton? Oh, it's a tough one because, like you said, we've got brand new, t- well, pretty much a brand new team, new season. Uh, I would like to think we're going to start the season with a 2 0 win at home. I think we've definitely got the quality for it. Not too many injuries, like you said, it's only skip that's not going to be available. Um, a lot more options off the bench. And I think the, the preseason has been okay. It's been okay so far. I think oh. this, is the, this is the real chance for the new players now to actually show show what they're about. So I'd, I'd like a 2 0 win starts off. Oh, I like the optimism. I, I think as well, like, I haven't really touched on who Southampton brought in because I literally think it's just a rebo. Then the other people they There's brought a in. a goalkeeper as well, I think. Is it a goalkeeper? From, as well? Yeah, apart from that, not too many others, I don't think. Bro, no, you've gone back to Chelsea, so he won't be oh, there. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Well, we took we took Forster off them, didn't we? So they had to bring someone yeah. in. So um... we were planning ahead for the first game of the season. <laughs> just didn't want to know after that Arsenal performance he had. Four D chess, just so that you can <laughs> yeah. advanced. No, you 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 both were like I just yeah I, I from the names that they brought in apart from now I remember now the the guy from Portsmouth uh, that's now gone to Southampton that they brought in. Um, there's not really many other people that I can think, oh, yeah, I know who you are. So mm, I'm hoping mm. that's a good thing. Uh, but Patrick, what's your kind of score prediction? I'm going big. I'm going to go 3-0 or maybe 3-1 if we turn off for a bit. But I think we'll, oh, man, touch wood. I hope I don't jinx myself. But I think it'll be a comfortable win. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to, yeah, 3-1. I'm going to say 3-0, actually. I think we'll be switched on for this one. Conte won't take no shit. We have been, a, you know, I know it's pre-season. There's been a few times where we've switched off, like especially in that game against the K-League All-Stars. Three of those goals were quite comical. So I'm hoping we're, we're at the races. I'm going to go 3-0. 3-1 oh, like at a bad, you know, at a stretch. <laughs> I mean, it's a bit like Janice said, obviously, he said concerned that we didn't keep one clean sheet. And I think yeah, for, uh, that is the one thing I'm a bit worried about, especially, obviously, Southampton or with Jane Wars proud. So, like I, I said, if he just has a free kick and we give away a silly foul on the edge of the box, he's going in the back of the net, isn't it? So, 100%. Yeah, I, do think, I, I do think we we have to take preseason with a pinch of salt, though, because there was a lot of chopping and changing around yeah, the team. Yeah. So, it, it's always going to cause a little bit of disparity between the players but yeah it's it's, it's not great <laughs> no it's not but hopefully like I say I, I think there's going to be some goals in the game I'm hoping it'll be a clean sheet because it'd be nice to start the season off with a clean sheet and we're at home as well so like you said I don't think Kondo is going to take much rubbish and that we will hopefully get all three points um but before we shoot I kind of want to talk about obviously we've spoken about transfers what we want to happen but I want to sit here now and talk about what we hope for the rest of the season because like we said mm-hmm. we're in Champions League um, there's a lot of good things happening. So, Patrick, I'll come to you first. What is your aspiration? Say it's the end of the season. What do you hope has happened? Uh, definitely back in the top four. That needs to be the minimum. Uh, and I really want a trophy. We need to win a trophy now. We look like we're assembling the squad. Conte's talking about stability and staying even longer if he's backed and the way things are going. I don't see why not. Sonny looks happy. Kane sounds happy. All the play. There's no, you know, every summer we always get murmurs or rumblings that someone wants to leave or someone's head's been turned. We've had none of that this season, and all we've done is strengthen. So, think we are in a really, really good space. And I know, you know, I might have sounded a bit, uh, a bit basically. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word, but a bit like almost like spoil earlier. But I know where we are right now and how close we are. But yeah, in terms of where we are right now, looking good. So top four. Definitely a trophy. I don't care which one, if it's the Carabao, the FA. We just need to go big in those games. 
and uh, I want us to at least get to the last 16 of the Champions League. We've never done, we've never not gone out, uh, uh, we've never, sorry, not made it to the knockout stages. I know a few people are like, oh, Conte's not good in Europe though, Conte, so, so we just need to get there. Then after that, it's anyone's game, and it? It's knockout football, you can draw anyone and just go for it. So yeah, at least the final 16 of Champions League, uh, top four again, which I think we definitely will get. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, God willing, a trophy. Let's end this Please. drought. It's been way too long. I was going to say, if England have managed to bring it home, then Tottenham <laughs> need to bring one home ASAP, please. Um, but, George, what's your kind of thoughts as well? Because I'm kind of on the same vibe that I think top four is pretty much... Sec- I don't want to say it's secured for us because I look like a massive meme if it's not. But I think it's looking good for us to be top four. And I think a trophy like that, <laughs> it has to happen, surely. Oh, 100 percent. Like we can't we can't go another year <laughs> without anything. Um I would love for us to be able to at least like challenge for the title. I don't mean that as in like, oh, it's gonna come down to the wire, who's it gonna mm. because realistically I think Man City and Liverpool are just are just incredible at the moment. Um, but I would still like us to be in and around the conversation like Chelsea were for a lot of last season yeah, until yeah. they sort of dropped off at the end. Because at least then we know that we actually we actually are sort of filling the gap and chasing the top uh, the top two teams. Um, Because that would be the only slight worry of it just being another top four year is that, okay, we may have improved the squad, but if we haven't actually really closed the gap, then we haven't necessarily improved too much. So, yeah, it'd be nice just to be in in that sort of conversation and definitely, definitely a a trophy of some description. And hopefully Kane is a World Cup winner by the end of it as well. Would, oh, mm, yes. would be another great little oh, addition. And, that and a new contract. A new contract, yes, new snap, contract. Snap. that's the one. That's, that's going to be the big one. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Massive, massive. Yeah. No, I think, I, I think we're kind of on the same wavelength in the sense that top four would be ace. And I think you're kind of right, George, in the sense that top four would be great if we can get there as in easier than last season because last mm. season was stressful. But again, you want to prove that you're reaching those two top big guns at the top. You don't want it to be another quite a big gap. I, th- I don't think it will be if we can bring in, like we said tonight, maybe a creative midfielder and definitely a new centre-back. I think the gap will be much closer than what it is if the window shut right now. But you want to see that improvement in the league table as well as on the pitch. So, yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, I think it's going to be a good season. Like when I heard the other day, uh, Patrick, when Conte said many, many more years, I was yeah. a bit crazy. Um, I don't know how you an about that. I, and he, wants yes. the, he wants to dominate the league for the next few years. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> Notice that no one's really picked up on that, as in the media's not really reshared that rival fans. But if Conte was to talk about, oh, I'm going to leave or this and that, it would be everywhere. But mm. as soon as it's good words and positivity, no one wants to spread that. So no I think that's quite yeah, no one wants to hear it, which is like the irony is quite astounding. So, yeah, it's funny. No, it is good. And like I say, I'm, I'm hoping it's the case, but we know that it, it might not turn into that. But to hear it come from his mouth makes me very excited for the season to start. And obviously against Saints at the weekend. I want to say before we go, a big thank you to everybody that's in the chat uh, this evening. Holly Salzburg's live will be back next Monday and we'll be actually discussing the first game of the season um, and it, it looks to be a decent show lined up so make sure you're subscribing so you don't miss that. I'm actually only about 40 subs away from uh, 2k if I've done my maths right so if All you right. are new well done. Yes, well done. please smash it. That'd be ace. Um, but no, I want to say a big thank you to you two as well and we'll go around the table like I always like to do so Patrick, <laughs> the start of you first mate. Where can everybody find you, Dick? Yeah, so on Twitter, the, the handle's there, at Patrick Tyrant. I actually need to update this because I just started my YouTube channel and it's the same handle as well, Patrick Tyrant yes. on Twitter. So thank you, everyone. I literally started it. There's no content, but I've wait, gone past way way past 100 subs, so I've changed the channel to my name, which is good, is in the URL. So yeah, everyone gets subbing on there. And then I'm on um uh, the TFT uh, Top 6 show every Mondays and Thursdays. Coys.com, not sure if that's going to continue this year, but I'm on there. Fuse TV official. So, yeah, I'm here there and everywhere. But, yeah, once again, Holly, thank you for having me on. No, no worries. And I'm so happy that you've managed to change your, your URL because I know how frustrating it is when it's a Oh, bunch yeah, of when you're waiting. <laughs> yeah, it's long, it's long. <laughs> but, no, good on you, mate. It'll be good. I can't wait for the content this season. And, George, as well, where can everybody find you doing your thing? Yeah, it's just, as you can see, George Achillea, just pretty much every social media platform you can find. The vlogs are going to be back. The European vlogs are going to be back, which is exciting. And hopefully some more some more content too. I want to spice things up a little bit, do something a bit different. So, yeah, more of that coming as soon as the season starts. No, oh, I love it. Thank you, guys. Um, and again, no, thank, thank you. you to everybody. Um, like I say, check out Holly Sotswell's live uh, on uh, Monday. And if you haven't seen it, you, you already know that England have brought it home. But I did make a video from the Agam Bar yesterday. So make sure you check that one out if you haven't 
already Sorry. it. And I think that's what we've done before I fall asleep because I've shattered. Um, but we've made it. We've done it. We've got the big rest game. Up, the rest weekend. up. Ready for the weekend. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, but, yeah, until next time, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs.